Hello, hey. Naveen. Hello, Kev. Hello, Mike. Hi, Naveen. Thank you for joining us. Hey. How can we help you? Yes, Kev. So uh, I have a question that, uh, I mean, uh, I found it a little difficult understanding this uh, routing concept. Uh, basically, like a uh, uh, routing, uh, uh, routing in um, uh, MVVM or uh, a Viper, basically. So I want to understand how to how to design it in a best way, uh, this routing thing. Okay. Yeah. So MVVM, MVC, MVP, they are UI architectural design patterns, right? For the yeah. UI side of your design, your architecture. So they exist to help you organize the UI components and how they communicate, how they are related, and kind of set some rules you know, to control the evolution of those components in the application over time. And I like to separate routing from views, from view controllers, from view models even. I don't want the view models routing to another view, for example, because in my experience, routing is like a separate concern outside the view, you know? And usually routing logic starts in the view controller. Right, we yes. you have like yes. the segues prepare for segue, or even like the view controller itself creating the child view controller and presenting it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it may work well for small applications. We probably know five years in the industry that as the app grows, it often pays off to start separating the routing from the controllers, right? Yes, because then you decouple controller B from C, D, E, right? You decouple the Controller from the navigation, which makes the controller more usable in different contexts. And when you need that, it's important to separate routing from the controllers. So Viper tries to give a, a way of doing it with the R here, Viper, the router, right? Yes. It's a specialized component. dedicated just to handle the routing logic. You know, it receives uh, messages like show yeah. contact us page, and it pushes something to the navigation controller, right? Yes. What I don't like about routing in Viper is that the presenter talks to the router and send messages to the router. The view talks to the presenter, you know, and the presenter talks to the interactor, and the presenter talks to the router, and the presenter needs to map the models. I think the presenter ends up doing too much in a Viper design. The problem you have with the view controller being massive view controllers because it does too much, in Viper, usually, the presenter becomes a massive presenter because it does too much, right? That's why I don't usually follow the Viper template. You know, I don't, don't like the Viper template because of that, the presenter becomes the bottleneck. And in MVVM, usually the view model becomes the bottleneck because all the logic that used to be in the view controller, now it's moved to a view model, right? And that's why I try to separate routers from presenters from view models because I think it's a separate responsibility. You know, and there are ways to do it. For example, storyboard segues. If you're using storyboards, you can define the navigation in the storyboard instead of in code. Thus, the view controller doesn't know where the routing is. But that, that works for simple cases, not for very more complex cases. In more complex cases, you can use custom segues. You know, you can subclass segues and have custom logic in the segue of how to present a view depending on the context. You can also use view controller containers if you are using UIKit. Or in Swift UI as well, you can create a view container that handles the logic. Hmm. So and start starting the view controller. <laughs> That's basic one, right? Second. Yes. Segues. Then we can go custom segues. Hmm. We can do containers. 
or creating a specific component to deal with routing, like Viper does, having a mm -hmm. router. Some people call it flows. Some people call them coordinators. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but the idea is exactly the same. It's a, it's a specific component with a, a, a single responsibility, basically, for handling the whole routing part. One question. Uh, so what is a, what is a, a key principle for router? A router? Like what is what is a key uh, key principle a router should uh, obey? Okay, it should uh, control right the transition or slash presentation from screen A to B. Yes. Right. Yeah. In context, so we, the router knows the context of that transition, mm -hmm. so we can make decisions. How to do it? You know, I'm going to present it modally, and am I going to do it uh, pushing a navigation controller? Will I, you know, embed it inside the current screen? You know, it, it kind of makes this decision because it understands the context of the application right now, and it has, you know, you pass all the data to it, hmm. and it can call the, it can make this decision. You know, and, only the transition uh, presentation from A to B. And uh, uh, consider if you don't, I mean, if you just add as a child child controller instead of controller or uh, we just add a sub view or something. So can all that logic, uh, can all that can uh, can be in the router? Which kind of logic, sorry? Yeah. Uh, when we are adding a child, child controller to a controller or uh, when we are, uh, consider if you are adding a sub view or something. Uh, or to the to the controller basically sub view uh, which which is again a view controller i mean uh, yeah i mean child view controller so when we are adding this child view controller so can that law can that also can uh, stay in the router or uh, yeah absolutely. can that stay in the view yeah hey it depends itself. depends on the logic of this right so let's say if you have do you have to add a child view controller into another child view controller mm -hmm. in which context like i'm trying to imagine a scenario uh, where this would be needed. Okay, uh, so uh, let us let us consider there is, is a, a segment controller, and we have what two different uh, uh, two different screens for each segment. Uh, we are supposed to add two different child uh, controllers there. Uh, so in that case, uh, consider that case. So can we have that uh, uh, those those transitions uh, those transitions in the routing, or uh, can it stay in the view controller, which is the best place? Right, so if we have a, it's like this, right? You have a view and then you have like two segment controls there yes. at the top and you can top and flip from one to the other, right? A yes, or yes. B. yes. So here, this is usually done with a container view controller, you know, that will contain yes. both of them. Yes. When you tap, you will just flip one or the other. Yes. You don't need a router for that. Uh, OK, so this is just for an example. Consider we are uh, uh, So this comes with a, a segment control class. Segment control class will handle everything for this. But consider we are designing uh, We are designing the segment control customly, uh, custom segment control. So in that case, at least we need to handle uh, these things of ourselves. Uh, so consider that context. So in that context, so how do we, uh, how these are uh, routing? So can we have that in the controller, the container controller itself, or uh, can we have that logic move to the router also? Usually, you, this specific case, because you're not transitioning from screens, right? It's a screen that has two options, for example. Yes. That would be probably in a container to manage this. But you can yes. say that this container is some kind of like transition from one to the other, right? But that's an implementation detail. It, I don't think you would need a router here because you don't need to understand a presentation or transition in context, right? Mm. Yes. Unless okay. you're passing, for example, some data from A to B, you mm -hmm. know, and from B to A back. Mm -hmm. The routing kind of controls that transition of data, you know, that's part of the context. You know, 
it controls like you present, for example, you go from screen A, A, and then you go to B. When B is done, the router usually knows that it's done. And if there's anything else to be done to press some data from B back to A, it can be done there in the router because it manages this relationship of these two screens in context. Mm. You know? Yes, yes. If you just literally transition from A to B, you don't even need a router here, right? It could be simply like push to a navigation controller directly. You can yes. do it in the storyboard because remember, if you're dealing with simple uh, go from A to B without any relationship between them, it's just like a navigation. You can do it with a segue, for example, which is a much, much simpler way. And you get all this built-in behavior. But now if you need logic dependent on the context, I'm going from A to B and then pass some data from A to B and then from B to A, then you need someone to coordinate, you know, this transition, this presentation in a specific context. And then you can put this logic in a router, which makes A and B decoupled from the context, from the presentation. So you can test them in isolation, you can develop them in isolation, you know, you can use them in different contexts. And then you can have one specific router for each context, which just manages that specific context. Understood. And uh, each, each, yeah, I'm fine with this. I, I got something. Yeah, I'm fine, fine. So, and uh, each flow will have a, a, a dedicated router, right? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, got it, got it. Like, uh, understood something on the router, like uh, uh, pretty good inputs. Yeah, I like and... to call them flows. I, I usually call them flows. I yes. try to avoid yeah. routers nowadays because because it, it, it got attached to with the the Viper template. Mm -hmm. And the way I see routers is a bit different than the Viper template, and especially mm -hmm. how the, the communication here happens. I, I, I don't let my presenter talk to the router. I don't let my view model talk to the router. Mm -hmm. What I usually do is my view controller will have some kind of delegate, and the, the router. router will implement the delegate, or the flow will implement the delegate. Let's say A and B have delegates, and my flow class will implement both delegates because it controls the context in which those two view controllers are being transitioned to and related, right? And then when there are callbacks, the view will tell a callback like, oh, a button was pressed, a model was updated or something like this. And then the flow gets those callbacks and make mm -hmm. a decision what to do. So basically, so yeah, so view model in uh, MVVM and presenter. So it's better to avoid, uh, uh, I mean, these things having knowledge of router. So only view controller can, I mean, yeah. So only view controller can have the knowledge of router. No, the view controller also doesn't have the knowledge of router. Know. The view controller has a delegate. Delegate to the router. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it sends messages through a, an abstract interface. It could be closure, it could be an uh, struct, it could be a, a protocol. Delegate. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you just send messages like events, like, hey, this button was tapped. But not like, it's, he's not, the view controller is not talking directly to the router. The view controller is not saying, like, hey, router does this, do this, do that. No, it just says, this happened to an abstract interface and the router mm -hmm. say, oh, this happened in the view controller A. Does I need to do something? For example, present B. Make sense? Understood. Yes, makes sense. You can find a, a demonstration of this in the professional IRS engineering series. So it is there on YouTube, right? Yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll find it. I'll find yes. it out. I'll find it out. I was, I was not knowing this. Otherwise, I would have already checked into it. Like, I'll find it out. <laughs> Yeah, give it a go. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll 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 dig in. I'll dig more on these things. Yeah, so that pretty much uh, helped me these inputs. And uh, so the next thing is uh, uh, the next thing. The next question is I want to see. Uh, I want to know more. Uh, uh, like I'm I'm struggling uh, uh, facing uh, problem solving rounds in interviews. So I need some inputs uh and uh, tips on these things like i'm 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 practicing the things but uh but somewhere like uh not able to cope up with the time so consider if they give like one hour to solve two three problems i was not able to do that 
so it, it is taking to time to arrive to the solution so yeah this is one problem i i have had okay so passing time sensitive challenges in interviews in problem solving interviews yes okay for example algorithms like mm, the meant yes. bubble sort or something like that yeah or solve a specific challenge okay is this happening a lot like you go to interviews and they give you like time constraints and yeah yeah so when i take some mocks mock mock interviews or uh, when i try to solve some problems right some some problems eat eats up uh, almost like one one and a half hour which, was, which is supposed to finish in a, a half an hour okay and is this live you do it live or they give you half an hour to solve it and you do it online on your own yeah so I'll, I'll do it offline like i'll take some problem like i'll do it offline it's i mean i'll i'll put some timer but the timer i don't know when it get ended and i right. keep on <laughs> hanging around yeah mm -hmm. yeah if you want to get faster or something you need to practice it with a timer as you're doing you know for example you want to mm -hmm. be faster at guitar what do you do you get like the the timer as well you put the song there you start playing slow first of mm -hmm. all first you're learning a song you need to play it slow and over time you speed mm -hmm. up you speed up speed up speed up until you get the, the speed you want right it's the same thing here mm -hmm. you need to start solving a problem then solve the same problem mm -hmm. you know with the timer and you're going to become faster and faster so if you want to become faster solving problems because you think this is going to help you pass interviews then you need to practice with intention of solving the problems faster and there's a bunch of websites with a bunch of challenges with timers in there that can help you, you know? And the more you do it, the better you become. So you need to practice with intention of becoming faster. Just like, you know, when you go to the gym, like there, you, you need to choose the intention you have when you go to the gym. Like, is it to lose weight? Is it to build muscle? You know, what is it? To increase your, I don't know, endurance. What is it? Cardio, you know? You cannot just go there with no goal. When you're practicing, you need to have a goal. And one of those goals could be speed got it got it it's more on me to get out of this got it um yeah, yeah. yeah. and also, uh yeah yeah mike go ahead go ahead yeah i was about to say that also make sure you understand you know what class of problem are you uh you have problem you, you have a problem with no pun intended there you know like if it's a a data structure uh, slash algorithm um type of exercise you know like of course you need to focus there more you know uh, if it's a, a domain uh, design type of uh, problem, you know, like focus on that more, you know, it's, again, like what Kyle said, intention, like be targeted at, at, at things, right? Yeah. 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 And also really think if this is a good use of your time, because not every interview will be putting you into time constraints, you know, challenges. So, if you spend like a lot of maybe this time you could be using to improving testing and architecture and other skills that you're actually gonna use every day at work you know so maybe i don't know maybe where you live it's very important that every job interview as that so does it's important that you pass the interviews so you need to be faster at doing things but i never been to an interview where i had to solve these things with you know time constraints and i never you know spent any any time trying to become faster at solving algorithm challenges because it wouldn't make me better at what i do at work so i try to optimize my time to do things that will help me get better at things that actually matter the most make sense got it got it makes sense awesome. thanks you thanks mike that was that was a nice session thank you have a have a good day bye, bye. take care bye yeah